Hello everyone, welcome to the SuperCloud event preview. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, and with Dave Vellante, host of the popular SuperCloud events. This is SuperCloud 2 preview, and I'm joined by industry leader and CUBE alumni, Vittorio Villaringo, Vice President of Cross-Cloud Services at VMware. Uh, Vittorio, great to see you. We're here for the preview of SuperCloud 2 on January 17th, uh, virtual event, live stage performance, but streamed out to the audience virtually. We're going to do a preview. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure, always uh, gl glad to be here. It's holiday time. Uh, we had the first SuperCloud on in August prior to VMware Explore North America, prior to VMware Explore Europe, prior to reInvent. We've been through that, but right now SuperCloud has got momentum. SuperCloud 2 has got some success. Before we dig into it, let's take a step back and set the table. What is SuperCloud and why is it important? Why are people buzzing about it? Why is it a thing? Look, we have been in the cloud now for like 10, 15 years, and the cloud is going strong. And I, I would say that uh, going cloud first was deliberate and strategic in most cases. In some cases, the, the developer was going for the path of risk resistance. But in uh, any sizable company, this um, caused uh, the companies to end up in uh, a multi-cloud world, where 85% of the companies out there use two or multiple clouds. And with that comes what we call cloud chaos, because each cloud brings their own management tools, development tools, security, uh, and so that increases complexity and, co and cost. And so we believe that it's time to usher a new era in cloud computing, which we, you call the super cloud, we call it cross-cloud services, which allows our customers to have a single way to build, manage, secure, and access any application across any cloud, lowering the cost and simplifying the environment. Since uh, Dave Vellante and I introduced and riffed on the concept of SuperCloud, as we talked about at reInvent last year, a lot has happened. SuperCloud 1 was in August, but prior to that, great momentum in the industry, great conversation. People are loving it, they're hating it, which means it's got some traction. Um, Berkeley has come on board with a position paper. They're kind of endorsing it. They call it something different. You call it cross-cloud services. Whatever it is, it's kind of the same theme we're seeing. And so the industry has recognized something is happening that's different than what cloud one was or the first generation of cloud. Now we have something different. This super cloud two in January, this event has traction with practitioners, customers, Big name brands, Saks Fifth Avenue, Warner Media, Finan Mercury Financial, other big names are here. They're leaning in, they're excited. Why the traction in the customers? Industry converts over to, to the customer traction. Why is it happening? You, you get a lot of data. Well, in, in SuperCloud uh, One, uh, it was a vendor fest, right? But these vendors are smart people that get their vision from where? from the customers. This, this stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum. We all talk to customers and we tend to lean on the uh, early adopters and the early adopters of the cloud are the ones that are telling us we now uh, are in a place where the complexity is too much, the cost is ballooning, we're going towards a slowdown potentially in the economy, we need to get better economics out of, of our cloud. And so uh, every single customer I talk to today or any sizable company has this problem. The developers have gone off, built all these applications, and now the business is coming to the operators and asking, where are my applications? Are they performing? What is the security posture? And how do we do compliance? And so now they're realizing we need to do something uh, about this or it's going to be unmanageable. I want to go to a clip I pulled out from the, uh, our uh, video data lake in the cube. Um, if we can go to that clip, it's um, Chuck Widdell at a keynote. He was talking about what he calls uh, multi-cloud by default, not by design. This is a state of the, um, of the industry. If we can roll that clip, and I want to get your reaction to that. Well, look, customers have woken up uh, with multiple clouds, you know, multiple public clouds, on-premise clouds, increasingly as the edge becomes much more a reality for customers, clouds at the edge. And so that's what we mean by multi-cloud by default. It's not uh, yet been designed strategically. I think our argument yesterday was it can be and it should be. It is a very logical place for architecture to land because ultimately customers want the innovation across all of the hyperscale public clouds. They will see workloads and use cases where they want to maintain an on-premise cloud. On-premise clouds are not going away. I mentioned edge clouds, so it should be strategic. It's just not today. It doesn't work particularly well today. So when we say multi-cloud by default, we mean that's the state of the world today. Our goal is to bring multi-cloud by design, as you heard. Yeah. 
Okay, Vittorio, that's, that's uh, the head of Dell Technologies, president, he obviously runs it, Michael Dell's still around, but you know, he's the leader. This is an interesting observation. You know he's not a customer, we have some customer clips we'll go to as well. But by default, it kind of happened, not by design. So we're now kind of in a zoom out issue where, okay, I got this environment, just landed on me. What, what is he, what's your reaction to that clip of how multi-cloud has become present in, in everyone's, on everyone's plate right now to deal with? Yeah, I, <laughs> it's, it's a um, multi-cloud by um, a default. I would call it by accident. We, we really got there by accident. I think now it's time to make it a strategic asset because look, we're using multiple cloud for a reason because all these hyperscalers bring tremendous innovation that we want to leverage. But I strongly believe that in IT especially, history repeats itself, right? And so if you look at the history of IT, uh, it was always when a new level of abstraction that simplified things, that we got the next level of innovation at the lower cost. You know, from going from C++ to Visual Basic, going from um, uh, integrating application at the bits and byte layer to SOA and then uh, web services. It's, it's only when we simplify the environment that we can go faster and lower cost. And the multi-cloud is ready for that level of abstraction today. You know, you made some good points. You know, developers went crazy building great apps. Now they got, they got to roll it out and operationalize it globally. A lot of compliance issues going on the costs are going up. We got an economic challenge, but also agility with the cloud. So using cloud and or hybrid, you can get better agility and also moving to the cloud is kind of still slow. Okay, so I get that. At reInvent this year and at VMware Explorer, we were observing and we reported that you're seeing a transition to a new kind of ecosystem partner. Ones that aren't just ISVs anymore. You have ISVs, independent software vendors, but you got the emergence of bigger players that just, they got platforms. They have their own ecosystem. So you're seeing ecosystems on top of ecosystems where you know, MongoDB CEO and the Databricks CEO both told me, we're not an ISV, we're a platform built on a cloud. So this new kind of super cloud-like thing is going on. Why should someone pay attention to the super cloud movement? We're on two, we're going to continue to do these out in the open, anyone can participate. Why should people pay attention to this? Why should they come to the event? Why is this important? Is this truly an inflection point? And if they do pay attention, what should they pay attention to? I would pay attention to two things. If you are customers that are now uh, starting to realize that you have a multi-cloud problem and the costs are getting out of control, look at what the leading vendors are saying, connect the dots with the early adopters and some of the customers that we're going to have at SuperCloud 2 and use those learning to not fall into the same trap. So uh, I'll give you an example. I was talking to a Fortune 50 in Europe in my latest trip, and this is an, a CIO that is telling me, we build all these applications, and now for compliance reasons, the business is coming to me. I don't even know where they are, right? And so what I was telling him is, look, there are other customers. Yeah. Yeah. They're already there. What did they do? They built a platform engineering team. What is a platform engineering team? It's, a, it's an operation team that understands how developers build modern applications and lays down the foundation across multiple clouds so the developers can be developers and do their thing, which is writing code. But now you as a CIO, as a, as a, as a governing body, as a security team, can have the guardrail so that you know that these applications are performing at a lower cost and are secure and compliant. Petura, you know it's really uh, encouraging and, and love to get your thoughts on this is one is the general consensus of industry leaders I talk to like yourself in the round is the old way was solve complexity with more complexity. The cloud demands simplicity. You mentioned abstraction layer. This is the next inflection point. It's got to be simpler and it's got to be easy and it's got to be performant. That's the table stakes of the cloud. What's your thoughts on this next wave of simplicity versus complexity? Because again, abstraction layers take away complexity. They should make it simpler. What's your thoughts? Yeah, so uh, I'll give you a few examples. One on the uh, development side and runtime, uh, you th you th one would think that Kubernetes would solve all the problems. You have Kubernetes everywhere, just look at But uh, every cloud has a different distribution of Kubernetes. Right? So for example, uh, at VMware with Tanzu, we create a single place that allows you to deploy that, uh, any Kubernetes environment. But now you have one place 
to set your policies. We take care of the differences between this, this system. The second area is management. Right? So once you have all, everything deployed, how do you get a single object model that tells you where your stuff is and how it's performing and then apply policies to it uh, as well. So these are two areas, and security and so on and so forth. So the idea is that figure out what you can abstract and make common across cloud, make that simple and put it in one place, while uh, always allowing the developers to go underneath and use the differentiated features for innovation. Yeah, one of the areas I'm excited, I want to get your thoughts on too, is uh, we haven't talked about this in the past, but it, I'll throw it out there. I think the, the new AI coming out, chat, GPT, and other things like Lenza, you're starting to see new kinds of AI coming. That's going to be right in the heavy lifting opportunity to make things easier with AI and automation. I think AI will be a big factor in super cloud and, and cross cloud. What's your thoughts? Well, the one way to look at AI is, is one of the main, main services that you would want out of a multi-cloud, right? And you want to eventually, right now, Google seems to have an edge, but, you know, the competition creates, you know, innovation. So later on, you want to use something from Azure or from, or from Oracle or something like that. So you want, at some point, that is going to be prone. Every single service in, in the cloud is going to be prone to abstraction and simplification, and I, I'm just excited about to see what. what I can't wait for the chat uh, services to write code <laughs> automatically for us. Well, they do. They do. <laughs> They're doing it now. They do. Oh, the other day, somebody, you know, that I do these uh, song parodies for uh, so for fun sometimes, and somebody the other day said, uh, asked the AI to write a. Uh, parody song for multi-cloud, and so I have the lyrics, I'm, stay tuned. <laughs> I should do that for my blog post, hey, write a blog post on this. January 17th, Victoria, thanks for coming in and sharing the preview. Bottom line, why should people come? Why is it important? What's your final kind of takeaway billboard message? History it repeats itself. IT goes to these major inflection points, right? We had the inflection point with the cloud, and the people that got left behind, they were not as competitive as the people that got on top uh, of this wave. The new wave is the super cloud, what we call cross-cloud services. So if you are a customer that is experiencing this problem today, tune in to, to hear from other customers in, in your same space. If you are behind, tune in to avoid the, 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 the mistakes and the, uh, uh, the shortfalls of this new wave and so that you can use multi-cloud to accelerate your business and kick uh, uh, butt in the future. All right, kicking, kicking knees and kicking butt. Okay, we're here on J January 17th, SuperCloud 2. Momentum continues. We'll be SuperCloud 3, there'll be SuperCloud 4. More and more open conversations. Join the community, join the conversation. It's open, we want more voices, we want more, more industry, we want more customers. It's happening, a lot of momentum. Victoria, thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.